Hello there, Austin here with another Paleo Zookeeper rant. When I often look up the pros and cons of the topic of uh, de-extinction, one of the criticisms against it was that it's a waste of time and money and that should be used and focused on saving species that are already here today. While this sort of response can be triggered for me, it does make points. If we were to resurrect a, a species using this technology, it must bring value to conservation for the animals, ecosystems, or even for conservation programs that are already here. This leads me to an extinct species of equid called the quaha. This animal is an extinct species of zebra native to South Africa, characterized by its head and neck being the only parts of the body that are striped, whereas its, its body is a solid brown color with white long stalk legs. It gets its name from the sound it makes. Like mentioned earlier, this animal is extinct. The last wild individuals died in 1878, while the last captive quaha died in 1883. Only one specimen was photographed alive, along with various illustrations and even several skins as proof of its existence. For the longest time, it was thought to be a distinct species from the other species of zebra. However, genetic tests in the 1980s has shown that the quaha is not as distinct as previously thought and is in fact a subspecies, a plain zebra. This has encouraged a man named Rao to start a breeding program dubbed as the Quaha Project to selectively breed living species of plain zebra in 1987. This illustration shows what many of the resulting Quaha look like from the project, with more recent individuals looking closer to the original Quaha, but still not quite there yet. I greatly admire and support the work that this project is going for and what it stands for. However, I don't think that they'll be able to complete it completely. And this is where I think using genetic technology like CRISPR would definitely help them out. Doing so by genetically editing, which is what CRISPR is, living zebras with quaha genes, especially the ones that are responsible for its appearance. This should be comparatively easy since the quaha and zebras are not that different from each other, as like say, the elephant and the mammoth, or the numbad and the thylacine. However, even if that might be the case, such a project would definitely be expensive, and all that would simply give you one individual animal or a couple of them, and you would need multiple individuals for genetic diversity and stability. With all this in mind, and with inspiration from what has been recently done with the Savalski's horses, I would propose on having multiple projects with each one of them focusing on a different individual quaha stallion by genetically editing genomes of different zebra stallions with the quaha genes. The surrogate mothers of the said stallions would most likely be horses, but it would be a good idea to either have a zebra as a surrogate mother or have the stallion foals raised with zebras so that the quaha stole colts could would be would know how to behave like zebras or quahas. When the stallions of each project reach sexual maturity, they will be brought to the Raul quahas for a breeding. With the quaha stallions there and careful breeding, the project's end goal would be more in range and the quaha will roam South Africa once again. If something like this could be done, then similar things could be done for today's endangered species as well. Like using the genetics of old museum specimens for today's living species to modify the endangered populations to help them with genetic diversity and stability. Some of the species that could benefit from this would be black-footed ferrets, cheetahs, sea otters, and white-handed langoos. So, this could be a good argument for supporting de-extinction programs for conservation purposes.